Right, good day everyone. Um, so this is my next um, guide video that I decided to make which would be how to help students install um, the newer Patsy Nippings IDE and um, this IDE as you can see above here um, is the newer version of the old Oracle Nippings that we used to have which was ended at 8.0 or 8.82 um, and then this is now the newer version of NetBeans um, and the reason for me is just to show you how this IDE works and as you can see you have several IDEs here you have BlueJ on my on this side um, on this side here you have Eclipse which is on, on, on that side um, there's another IDE on top and your know, famous one is um, IntelliJ JetBrains which is the one that you see right there on top right so i'm here to talk about the one above which is um, patsy net beans so yeah let's jump into it so what we're going to look at is how to install net beans on um, windows right so we're first going to use windows and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the website and by going to the website i'll show you step by step how this works so what i'll do is i'll click on this website link and i'm just using a normal its browser and then I'll just click download. Now it will give me options as you can see here and then I'll choose Windows because I've got a Windows operating system. In the next video I'll show you how to use Linux um, um, and then the next one would be Mac OS for the other versions. This one is just for Windows um, so what I'll do is I'll click on that EXE will take me to another link. Now here's where it gets a bit tricky obviously not so much it just gives you different links of the EXEs and also an option to verify if you need to check them. So we will click on the first one, which is 12.6, and we'll click on that, and that will start downloading onto your into your downloads folder. Now that will take time because the file size is about 413 megabytes. So depending on the speed of the internet, that will take time. So we'll wait for that's done, and then we'll continue the video. Right. So now we can see I've paused the download, so roll the video. So I've got nine seconds left for the installation to be done. And when that's done, we can then install a patchy net pin. So we'll just wait till that's done. Zero seconds. And now we verify. What we'll do next is we'll open the file. So we'll click on open and that will start opening the net pins IDE. That will take time. Then it will ask you to um, do you want to install this app? So depending on user control, user account control settings, you would have this appearing, and then you just say yes, and now it will give you this. So now it will tell you that you need JDK 8 newer required for installing NetBing in. So here's the step that you need to do first, and that's the reason I'm making this video so that you don't think that you can just install NetBeans beforehand. You first have to install your JDK. So you need any JDK above JDK 8, which is your Java development kit and you need that before you can install NetBeans so let's go do that and then we do that step so what we'll do then is since you have that open we'll just search Java and we'll say JDK and now it will give you different options right so what you would do is you would go to Oracle's website right and then you just click on Java downloads and then from there you will get to this page where you'll see the different versions of the JDK. So here you already have 17, but we need to find a stable version that work with NetBeans, right? So let's just go back and just look at what is the requirement. So they say that Apache NetBeans requires JDK 11 plus officially running 11 and 17. So you can choose either 11 and 17. It also tells you that uh, it can run on JDK 8, but some features will be disabled um, based on JDK 8. So the best ones you they would say um, is rather use either 11 or 17. Right. So this is another way where you can where you could download from the source, but we're not going to go there. So we'll get JDK 11 or 17. So let's go to 11, and what we'll do is we'll get to the same site as Oracle. So we'll click on that Oracle website. We'll see that it says Java is e downloads. We'll scroll down and we'll see the different files, different operating systems. So this is Linux, 
that is Mac OS and there's your Windows. Now depending on if your operating system, you would need Windows 64 bit. So we'll click on that bin.exe. So we'll click on this file. When we're all done, we'll get an agreement to accept and then you say yes and then we'll download it. Now while it's busy downloading the JDK, it will ask you to log into Oracle. Now this is just a step where Oracle would want you to to have an account with them and if you don't have an account they want you to create an account so around and the other way would be to install um, the JDK 11 with using java.net and that would be using open JDK right so if you want to follow that step that would be using JDK without the Oracle account and that would take you to Oracle all well, the same link as that but you would then have this one called open logic or any of the other links but not to complicate things and making things difficult we'll just go the normal route for now and then what we'll do is we'll use the windows 11 we'll click on that and then we, when we, what we have to do next is that we will have to sign into our oracle account so what we'll do is we'll then create an account and then with this step this is the best way to do it if you have an existing account which is free you can do that so or if you have the file already downloaded that's another way so we're just going to fill in all these steps and then you'll go hit next so what i did now is i just created an account so i'll use this email address i created a password i just added dummy information there so i can just get by this bypass the step and install the so now that we complete all that information we then get a email notification as i just heard now and I now need to verify my email address in this sense um, and, 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 and allow me to, to log into my account, All right? So, and then it takes up to three days, so let me just do the verification. So I've done the verification, so I'll just refresh the screen. And I will see, okay, so let's just go back because I've done the verification, so now I can go log in. So now I'll just use the same username I just used, which is the email address. And then I'll use the parser that was just created. And then I'll sign in. What will happen now is it will give me the option to download the JDK. And this is probably the best way unless you go the open JDK route. And there you can see immediately it starts downloading the JDK. I have downloaded the open JDK. But that's a step for, for another time. Because if you don't want to go through this, which I'm going through now. Um, the other option would be to, to use the OpenJDK and then what you would do is you have to manually um, enable the variables in your windows to allow it to see it as Java is installed using JDK, the OpenJDK. So that's a step for next, so I'll just let it continue downloading and we'll get back to that. Right, we have about 4 seconds left um, for this download to complete. So after this is done, then click and it will install the JDK. So this is the step. And then it will ask you do you want to make changes to your computer and you can just say yes to that. Now this will now install your Java onto your PC. So you just hit next. Choose the default folder where it needs to install like your Java JDK 11 folder in your program files. You then hit next and then you wait for the installation to complete. Won't take long. Um, it will give you this and will tell you that it's been successfully installed and then you can either go next steps and get other things done like the dots or the docs or you can just go and hit close that's all you do and that's all now if you want to verify that your java is installed you can go to cmd and you can just type the back c and if you get the response that means that java is installed and then you can see you have your compiler responding to you all right so now what we do then next is after all this is done we then go back to our NetBeans which we did the first time so we'll go back to downloads and we'll open Apache NetBeans we'll open it now again and we say yes because now it will detect that we just installed the JDK right so now we'll go next now we'll configure the install installer now it will ask you to install you can customize it also based on what type of IDE or runtimes you want I'll just select all of them, you hit next, you accept the license agreement and then after that is done you just hit next, you choose the location where you need to install it, you can change this to either your C drive but in this case we'll leave it in program files 
and then this is where you it will pick up the JDK that we're talking about. You will you will see that it will pick up other maybe, maybe another JDK if you have another install. In this case, it's picking up the only one that's there. We'll hit next. We can then untick this if you don't want to check for updates. If you don't want to save your internet usage bandwidth, you can do that. Or you can leave it on if you want to make it check for you for updates. Now this will now install your NetBeans IDE. It won't take long, take a few minutes, and then when that's done, you can now go ahead and configure your different plugins for your NetBeans. And that is the step mainly how you install the NetBeans. So first thing that I said first is you have to have your JDK. In this case, we're using JDK 11 as required from NetBeans, saying that that is the most stable one. Um, and then also we can either use um, 17 um, which I believe 17 would be long-term support they don't say 17 there as long-term but if I look at 17 it could be that it could be you will have bought better support for the, for the duration of that addition or that version of it so what we'll do now is we'll see that NetBeans has been installed and now we'll just hit finish what will happen next is it will open up NetBeans um, if not, using this, just go click on NetBeans and you open it, um, which I'll do now. And then now that will now ask you to configure NetBeans for the first time. Now we've installed NetBeans 12.6, and what we can then do is we go to Tools, we go to Plugins, and we check what any plugins you might need for your particular IDE. You will also see the available plugins that's available that you can install when you configure NetBeans. Um, and you would see what is installed. Now all of these are installed but not active. So you can check the details of it or you can just select the ones you need for your IDE um, and then if you don't need the others you can just untick them um, and then we'll just see what we couldn't activate. So let's just um, double check everything. Let's do the normal ones and see what actually happened. Let's do that. We activate it. We can activate those plugins. I'm just waiting for that. Let's explain something. I see a message popped up at the bottom. And there you could activate those ones. So there's ones that couldn't activate. Um, and it will show you in detail. You will see that is grayed out, that is grayed out, that is grayed out, that is grayed out. And it could be there's other dependencies that are needed. Um, so let's see if we can close and then what it's doing it's building, building your plugins now and you can see even if you close your NetBeans and you open it it will look a bit different because it had enabled some of the plugins that you activated and that's mainly it that's how you use NetBeans next is you would probably now want to configure your project whatever you're going to do in NetBeans that's the next step but that is now the only th reason and the only thing you can do um, besides um, doing other things so there you can see it will ask you about improving of using data I just say no to that I'll go back to plugins and you will see now there's more things that's activated um, because we activated those ones um, if we click on that again you will see that the base IDE um, there's not much we can do there you can click on groovy you can activate that so it depends on what you need, um, the, you know, based on your use case, you can then use that. So that is it from me. Um, I think what I wanted to show you is just the fact that you can now um, use um, the IDE, as I said above, um, to do your projects and do that. And this was just to show you really how important it is to have your first, your NetBeans JDK, sorry, your HAO JDK, to have that installed before you install your IDE. And with all this IDE, they require Java. So the best tip is to, yes, you want to have to create that Oracle account just to get past that stage to install that JDK. And that's all you need to do. So thank you. And I hope this was helpful for you. Do you understand? If it's the first time you're using IDEs, I hope this helped you to understand it better now and understand everything better going forward. Thank you.